this morning I'm going to do a watercolour of this beautiful old stone farmhouse here. It's absolutely beautiful, beautiful. If I win the lottery, I'm interested in this house, definitely. Anyway, you will see I've sketched it out, a fair amount of detail, um, just to give me some sort of guidance, but uh, we'll see if we can, uh, what we can make of this. So I've got my reference picture, which I will show you. You can see that's a beautiful, beautiful carboniferous limestone building with the nice umber, dark roofs and a little bit of green, a nice sky. So anyway, let's give it a go. Let's see what we can make of that. So I will start with the sky. Generally, in watercolour, you start with a light to dark. You do your light because, of course, um, then you've got, uh, it's difficult to put, to retrieve a light if you've got colour on it. Uh, it can be done with a good paper. You can lift to some degree, but basically I'm going to do this sky in a nice wash now if I can find my brush here we are so I'm going to wet it got some good nice clean water so wet the whole of your sky area make sure it comes down over the edge of the building by the chimneys because you don't want to have to try and retrieve or paint around it to get some sky in so wipe down nice and wet write down all these little details around here where I'm going to have a little bit of tree poking through so I think we've got that wet a little bit more perhaps in there right down and I've got it tilted somewhat so that I can do a graduated wash. I'm going to put a nice, wet, uh, quite juicy blue color and keep with a single stroke like this, or various strokes, but the same brush load, and it will get lighter towards the bottom, towards the horizon, which um, we want as well. So I'm going to, I think I better clean up my palette a little bit oh but I think the color I've got on that will do very nicely uh, as an initial wash there for my roadway rather than waste it it's a nice little bluey slaty colored gray and of course we can put other elements over it later and of course that also comes up into this man's little driveway so I'm going to make use of that. Just a little gentle wash there. And of course, it's got a little bit on this pavement here, uh, which I'm going to make use of. Uh, the pathway goes up there, up the side of the street. Right, let's get back to the job in hand. Just clean up this little bit of my palette here. So it's not muddy. You want to try and keep your your colours uh, nice and bright with watercolour. And the way to do that, of course, is fresh colour, clean water, and try not to muddy the situation uh, by having dirty palette, dirty paints. So that's quite clean now. So next is ultramarine blue, which is a lovely colour here. French ultramarine. But of course you can have various colours depending on the kind of sky you're interested in, the mood of the sky. Um, you could put cobalt blue uh, or a little, little bit of crimson or alizarin to put, change the texture of the sky. Um, depending on the seasons and all the 
atmospherics as well. So I've got a nice rich colour there. I'll rub this in with my little squirrel brush which holds plenty of water. So load it up as far as you can and then one brush load come in like this. And you'll see it's got it will fade or graduate. It's a graduated wash. In fact I could put a little bit more colour in the top here. And of course with watercolour you should remember that it will dry probably 50% lighter. So you have to try and bear that in mind when you're painting. So we'll let that run down a little bit there. Uh, I've come a little bit over my rooftop but that's not a problem. Just wash out your brush. Damp it off a little, have it a little bit damp and as you see I'll mop up my building where I've got a little bit of colour on but that doesn't matter really not critical because I will be going over with a darker colour anyway. So squeeze out the excess from your brush with your fingers like that and I'll just again clear this a little bit. Got little, some cottages here on the rooftop of one house. Oh, I need to bring that. Oh, there's going to be a little bit of a tree there. So not a problem. All right, now I also want to add some interest to that sky and I will do that by again drying off my brush and just dabbing it over here. A little bit of rock and roll and you can create a little sky shape. A little bit too wet still I think my brush. I need to dry that off a little bit. What you want is nice sort of feathery edge which you can get you see and if you want to put in a bit of shadow of course you just that little bit of the blue that you mopped out can give you some bit of shadow where you could drop a little bit of little crimson resin in to try and get some shadow form in your sky. Okay I think we better leave that now. Uh, is it white enough? Let's see perhaps I'll have a little go at lifting a little bit brighter there. Yeah. A little bit brighter. Okay. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. Right, next I'm going to go into the uh, sort of stonework. Lots of lovely Lovely stonework in this building. And if I refer to my reference photograph, of course, remember this is um, you're doing a painting, you're not trying to get it exactly the same. Uh, if you want it absolutely accurate, that of course, that's what photographs do. This is my, my take on it, my little bit of interpretation, my little artistic license. So you can see it's quite. A yellowy uh, color to these uh, some of this stonework certainly on the left of this building here where the sun is coming from this direction so that will be lighter than this face here which is slightly shadowed slightly darker in tone so let's get a bit of um, 
yellow ochre going, which is this one here. And uh, find yourself a little bit of space there. I need to wet that brush a little bit more. That's about it. Yes, that should do it. And I'm going to just wipe in here. This face. Just sweep it down. And this is a number nine brush, Dalaroni. It's got a lovely little point to it, holds a lot of water, and gives you a really nice degree of control. So, a little bit on that chimney up there. Uh, of course, on the on the dark side there, I will introduce some darker tones shortly. So I'm going to do just a little bit darker here. Got a little bit of umber in there. A little bit of colour left from my previous paintings. You see, just tap on this a little darker tone and just drop it in. Gently wipe over here and you'll see a little texture on the paper and little white elements shine through which is um, a feature of watercolour which uh, is adds to its charm I think so don't worry about leaving a little bit darker on these eaves but I'll be dealing with that later when I put some shadow colours in but I'm just going to get this face of this wall in so we see a little bit of the form of where we're going with this come down here right down here's the windows I'll leave I've left there we'll leave those and we'll drop colour into them later into that and this white, big white gap, of course, is where some tree will go. So don't be alarmed by that. Again, while this is damp, while this is um, damp, I can, with watercolour, I can drop a little bit of colour into these uh, areas. And it adds a little texture to your colours. digital art there so you've got some little stone work there try and keep fairly sharp edges that helps to define the form a little bit in buildings and give you some form right now I think we could perhaps um, oh, it's a little bit darker in here again a little mixture of umber and ultramarine and I can get it a little bit darker in here which I need to give me some contrast right okay let's leave it with that for the moment and then get something on this roof well, we can let's get some uh, burnt umber there I've got uh, burnt sienna there and raw sienna but let's get a mixture of this dark burnt umber and raw sienna let's make a little bit of a, a mixture an experimental mixture here let's see the umber color nice sort of earthy oh yes I think that's that's fine I think that'll be lovely for that that little rooftop. Yes, there it goes. I'll run it down here. Got to be careful when you do your roof. It it doesn't bleed. If my sky is uh, damp, so it might bleed into it. But I think we've left enough 
time for that to not be a problem. So as you see, just wipe it over. As you see, this brush can carry an amazing amount of water and colour. So just remember it is watercolour and the feature of watercolour is its luminescence. It's translucent. The water has got to come, the light has got to come through. You get your whites generally by leaving areas of white from your paper. You can actually have highlights with a bit of Chinese white or even gouache, which is opaque um, watercolour, uh, although some people would consider that a crime almost. So, um, but you do what you need to do to create your picture in the image that you want. No right or wrong. Art is, is a value judgment. What I think is lovely you may hate and vice versa. So, I say, all right, I'm trying to keep some fairly sharp lines to make it read like a bit of architecture. And again, if I look at my my uh, reference definitely there are darker parts on that so I'm going to darken up and drop little elements a little bit of blue into that a little ultramarine blue and more umber so I can get some darker elements which are just about here so it doesn't, it's not flat. If you have all one tone, they will look flat. And uh, not read as if you've got some three dimension there. Like that. And of course I can do a little bit of chimney on this darker side there. And have a little and dark this side too. I did put a little bit on blue earlier but it's not dark enough. Let's beef it up a little bit. Yes I think that'll do it. And of course that colour there's a little house a rooftop round the back there. I think that colour will do the trick there. Right, let us go a little bit darker here because it's a shadow, it's a uh, dormer, it's casting a shadow on this bit of the roof and uh, yes a little bit is coming down to there. and a dark element here. Okay, let's leave it at that for the moment. Always come back to these things, of course. Um, right, I'll go back. I think I've got this, this sort of brownie, the ochre combination here. I think I could put something in this wall. It's got these little slatted um, um, slates are put on. They're not slate but made of Cotswold stone. They're all standing on end to so try and create some form by tapping in with your 
pointy brush and then we can put different colors in. I can put some different darker elements into that in a minute. But there's this stonework. As you can see, the, the extent of the stone here, more along here. And again, you can try and get some form of the stone, stonework. Just touching stuff in like that. And this is a fairly loose form of a painting. I'll call it loose. It's not absolutely architectural correct and sharp. But as I said, this is the style that I choose to paint in. And you have your own style. You can create your own. <coughs> Give that a little wash over there. Like I say, this paper is 140 pound, blanked and rough, they call it. Uh, it's rough because it's got a little bit of texture, a little bit of tooth to it. So you can see it leaves a little bit behind where it doesn't want water and the colour doesn't go in get the lights shining through which is a nice feature and you do you decide how heavily you want to go with that I think I need a little let's get some of the other ones in uh, I think I'll try a little lighter on this side on this face I'm always getting a bit of sunshine so we'll pop that in there. Sun's coming from this direction. The light. I took this picture just a couple of days ago, actually. So I remember it well. And this, this is catching a bit of light as well. It's the gable end of this, this cottage, this row of cottages here. And that comes right down here. Of course, the space that I've left there is going to have a nice tree, um, not tree, um, shrubs and ivy growing up and bushes and what have you. So we'll come down a little bit there so we get the form and off to my right there is the rooftop and we'll do that a little different colour to give us some contrast. Uh, a little bit of uh, a building here which is also in this stony colour. Nice honey coloured stone, reminiscent of what you see in the Cotswolds. And in this part of the world as well. And that stone goes all up there. And again, the top of that, I will be putting and darker tones and some foliage as well. Um, I just noticed I can use this colour to do this face of this wall. As I say, the sun is coming from this direction, so they're always going to be a little bit lighter in there, like that. And again, this part of the building here like that just crop it in and um, also this side as well can you see the form how it's taking shape it's having a little bit of shape this this building its extension here of this house so I've got, I could have it a slightly up but a slightly a hint there to make it contrast with this and this side all right there we go it's a little bit darker there um, and also I could use a little bit there on that side to make that edge read the 
that we've got a bit of shadow there bring that down um, now I think I need to let's put in some roof color for we've got some nice terracotta color there and a little bit here uh, so let's have a go with that I've got, I've got this lovely um, color here called light red which strange enough is not a not a truly a red it's just a lovely lovely light sort of copper well not copper um terracotta red beautiful for tiles so we'll pop that in there quick sweep down there and of course i can introduce texture later with some little fine details if I wish and I can use that for a chimney and um, there's a little bit of red on this side as well I don't know whether they're red brick but they certainly look a little red so we'll go with that and we'll go with it here and of course the rain feature of that is this lovely red tile roof on the extension to this house or I don't know yes I think it might be part of this cottage on the right so I'm going to sweep it down there and again in the front where my brush is now I will have some green there's a little green popping up there a little bit of red tile work here as well get some colors going um right i think we can safely say this we can get away with putting using the colors here to give us some terracotta chimney or brick work red brick work chimneys and I'll just refresh my picture right um, let's put a little color in here so we can get this form correctly um, I got a feeling a little bluey a little bluey brown might give us a little bit of form and shape if I pop that in there and this side as it's going here in the background uh, under these eaves are really quite dark so I'll do that and run that in <coughs> and I can put a little more color in that chimney make that read more realistic on the shadow side and get some form in right okay i think we've done that a little bit of you can always add these details later of course but um try to rush them in so that you can see the process put a few details on this a roof with this fine pointed number eight here surprising got a little blue there which I can put in for those little lamp those little roof lights there um, so let's put a little I've got to do a little bit on that roof I've got to put something there it's all rather vague at the moment um, yes I think I'll Go with a little bit of red reddish tile I think that will work there comes down there and there's a window just see a little hint of it right okay well we'll deal with that we'll put something in there in a minute to try and delineate that window all right now let's
let's put um, right, let's get some green in so we can uh, kill some of these whites at the moment they're somewhat distracting um, they throw you off to get your balance right so what we'll do we'll just tickle in a bit I'm just tidying up on this chimney while I spot it there's no absolute order in which you've got to do these things you can just move around have a bit of fun as your eye takes you right let's get some green this one I've got sap green a little bit of sap green um, and then you can add a little bit of yellow ochre like that sort of yellowy lightish green um, which I might do just the top of this this bit of foliage here I don't know could it be wisteria I think it might be actually wisteria so I've got it on the elements that catch the sun I'm going to just have a little bit lighter a bit lighter green like that it obscures this window somewhat too comes right up here I need to trim that a little bit I think and of course on here on this ivy there I have a, a smidge of light colored ivy there too so I'm going to vary the greens of course you've got to be a little careful with your greens it's so easy to have them very samey of course, nature is full of amazing different greens. So let's um, drop those in this where I know there's green. But I'm going to vary them because I'm going to drop in some other greens onto them at the moment. I haven't quite got that little tree in the background poking out. And in the distant distant trees of course always the colour is going to be a bit lighter lighter than you would um, have in the foreground it's called colour perspective in the distance it becomes lighter and um, not so intense so keep your intense uh, colours for the foreground so let's beef up my my green Got a little bit of sap green and a little bit of hooker's green which is a very vivid green of course you you shouldn't use that on its own because uh, it won't read very well it's just too gaudy um, so we're going to pop a bit in here and these different ones get them in and of course here are wisteria I think that was, pop that in, come all the way over here, a little bit of a, in the distance there, tree poking out behind those buildings, a little bit there, drop a little bit in there, and of course here, I've got ivy as well. So um, I think I could use some little speckly bit to try and create some suggestion and try and get some of the shape of the ivy as well. See how it sort of trails and with the point of your, your um, number eight, number eight I've got here, yep, yeah, you can show some delineation of the colour and along here of course there are privet hedges so I've got to deal with that shortly um, I need perhaps to put a little bit more dark in there as well comes over this window drops down here um, I think I'll uh, get those darks in while it's still on the wettest side 
bit of burnt amber there and blue ultramarine blue a little bit of ochre that's can you see that it's a sort of a bit olivey color but i think i could get away with putting some variety in there it comes out so it gives some form that's some shape when we say form that's what we mean we mean to have some it doesn't look flat and here this is a, a, a tree and bushes going on here they've got bushes here I've left this white areas in my drawing with little elements to try and um, you know to remind me what I have going on there um, yes I need to take that over that white space there all right let's leave it that for the moment we can perfect these things later um, this area is a really dark dark um, I think it's be pretty it's a pretty hedge so I need to get a really good dark color going on a nice dark green a lot of blue that's looking too blue now a bit of hookers Darken it up a little bit. Um, that's looking better. Do I need it darker or not? Let's have a little bit more. Um, let's put a bit of sap in it. We want it green, but we want it dark. Yes, I think that's that's looking a bit more like it. What do you think? Yeah, a little bit of it going in instant gardening there's quite a, a linear shape to this too so I want to use that to um, take your eye into the picture you know, use some kind of perspective it comes like that all right and since I've got a slightly different colour, why don't we put a little bit more in there and try and get some shape. And of course down here, I've got a bit of uh, grass coming on this pavement here by the bottom of this wall. And what I can do is it's in the sunlight, the sunlight is up here and there's a little bit of brightish light so I'll put some, I've got some uh, leaf green in uh, my little other watercolour set that I have here. You see that green? Rather gaudy but it adds a little, little something there I think. I can just create a different tone because if you have it all the same it doesn't rewrite nature is infinitely variable like that so what I've got to do now of course I've got to get this wall more realistic and I haven't done the, um, the wall behind that gate so I should go back and try and um, create some stonework there and then of course what I can do is to um, when it's dry a little bit paint over the uh, redo the redraw and repaint the the gate and um, there's a different green here let's use a bit more of that leaf green I want to it's a different plant here Never knows what it is but it's certainly a different one so I wanted to try and get some of that in and um, yes right 
Okay, let's get back to that. Get back to that uh, little bit of stonework hidden behind that gate. So let's get a bit of ochre going. Um, a bit green. I don't want it greening. Let's clean up my palette a little bit there. That is a little bit. Right, now we get a bit of ochre going in there. Yes, I think we can do that. And uh, just we'll sweep that over there. And create some more. I'm going to put some texture in here with some little changes of colour shortly. There's a little entrance to the uh, house there. And the light is catching their entrance, so I just put a dab there to try and catch that edge that they're going in there. Um, and of course, this bit of the driveway, I need to do that. Um, but let's get this. This wall is not right. It doesn't look like that. So I've got a various colours. We'll drop some different colors in try and uh, create something a bit more re realistic in my reference picture it's definitely got a lot more stone shapes in see I can do this one I see how to you put it in have some more edge on like that Try and try and vary the strokes a little bit, a little bit of different colours and a little bit of green going in there. Let's get back to some um, umber. Just dab them in, little shape, little stone shapes that there are. And the bottom they tend to be a little bit more square so you try and create these illusions as I said it's a lot of art is illusion what you don't put in sometimes the the observer's eye can put in strange as it is if you do too much detail it's sometimes counterproductive strangely enough start to look and look at detail and become more critical um, so you need to bear that in mind it's a constant tug between when you've done enough or not but I got a feeling that I'm not dark enough on this wall by any means so I think I'm gonna have to be a bit a little bit bold uh, and go with some umber and uh, that's some ultramarine you can see that sort of greyish colour that yes I think that's bringing it up to much more of the tone that it is because I need it's got all these stones with edges on sort of edge edge on here look so I'm going to do that and it comes right across here behind this gate can you see again try a variety of colors to create some and of course you've got to Often on to anchor a structure, you make sure you've got it dark enough at the bottom. There's always somewhat darker these edges, and of course I need to put some dark into these these stones, these slatted stones, these edge on, and put something dark in like this. trying to keep the form but you can do these things at any time you know they you 
can fiddle and tiddle around with it as, as long as you like. But of course that age old battle, don't overdo it. Sometimes it's a constant struggle to know when to stop. When have you done enough? And that is the fun, the constant challenge. As long as you're having some fun. You see it dips down a little bit here. Um, what I can do now, well I've got a darkish colour, let's, let's darken it up a little bit, let's put that gate in. Again I've got a little umber and a little bit of blue, a little bit of ultramarine and we can just put in that, that gate post down there. I add another one there is essentially the part of it and um, it's got to stand out against the the black of the or I say the light the my gate's got to stand up stand out from the background which is light there in the uh, the stonework so there's not a problem here as I say, with a lot of watercolour, it's, it's about getting the contrast right. Put a little bit there. Got another. I think I've got something going on here. Gate here. That's got to be the post, isn't it? And let's put some... beams in there and we've got one coming in this direction as well so you can fiddle around as much as you like to get your your element of realism and of course what you could do is put um, with a dry brush or dryer paint thick dry paint when the overall picture is dry. Put in a lot of details. You could actually put in um, uh, little hinges and things. So when people view it, they go, oh, look at that. You know, you can go as much detail as you want. Let's anchor that down well. Edge of this wall is not really anchored. And we need to put a little bit more texture in this wall as well try and represent some of these stones uh, don't worry about the lights they add something to it but it's, it's a balance to know when to knock out a few of them which I'm doing here I don't want too much it's a little drain cover there let's put that in and um, now, of course, this I need to put in this little bit of stonework here. Which is, um, I think I'll put in a little bit of bluish in there to give me the contrast. Yes. You can see the the structure better now if I do that and tighten up on the two little sharp edges a little bit of texture on the little form you can add all these little different things to give you form and there's a, a guttering goes down there I get down this side you can see those little bit of gutter down there run down there look and then comes out here and down the crease of this building here. So there we go. All right, what I need to do now is, um, yes, I need to tighten up on uh, you know, some little features so that window, make them realistic. Look, I could just got a, a mapped out got a piece of glass, but I noticed the edges of these glass 
Benmax there are quite dark. The frames are dark. Look at that. And there's a lot of um, um, tile crease marks and tiling lines on here, which I can add to give me, again, a little bit of a edge to this building, make that stand out. Again, little chimney pots, give some edging, a little dark side to that chimney look, or give it some form, because it's real. He's got his chimney and he's got his um, aerial, of course. And I think there's something else down there. I'm not quite sure what that is. But some building standing behind there. Right, that's, that's come in there. A little bit there. Right. Let's get some form into this. A window there I need to sharpen up on. Right, this is a great big slab of uh, colour or blankness at the moment. It's boring. We need to do something about that. Um, so I think I'll mix up a bit of a shadow colour. And the way to do that is you get a little bit of blue, ultramarine, and uh, some cadmium red and this will make a nice shadowy color for you can you see that sort of purpley shadowy color so this all this is in shadow here and it comes all out here like this it's coming right down here I keep it fairly wet. I have a quick reference to my looking down at my picture to see if I'm getting a rough shape on that. Something that reads, and of course we've got shadow that's coming from this this wall across the road. I've got that. Uh, that shadow comes all up here, and the shadow here, I do believe, as well. Coming, let's get some more water, more water, and keep it fairly loose, soft edges. Go over that, and it also shadows here. So I'll just beef that up a little bit, and down here. His shadow like this. So what do we do now? Let's oh I think we could do with a bit of shadow on that side. I think we'll leave that like that. And all this white I need to deal with that let's put a little bit of light smidge of that shadowy color I think I could probably put a touch of ochre or something to warm it up a little bit and to darken up a bit in there right I think we could get away with that Soften these edges with a little water. It's not reading right. I think I need more water to. That's right. Right. Okay. 
don't fiddle. Right, a little bit more texture in that wall. And this will also somewhat in shadow. I think I need to darken that up a bit. A little bit of umber, a little bit of blue. So it looks a bit dark in there. Right, let's deal with the um, these windows. Right, I think before I put anything in the white of the window, I'm going to get a little bit of um, uh, a little bit of ultramarine uh, ochre, a little bit of ochre going, and uh, try and beef up this and give myself a bit of an edge there. I think that's a bit better and I've got a little bit of house shining through there. Let's tighten up a bit on these so it reads a bit more real. Right, so down there there's that right, okay. Yes, a little bit there and a little bit more there all this face here right okay and this uh, stonework of course it is stone so you could put a tap little bits in like this and it will read a little bit more like the stone if it is. Some brickwork here. Try and give texture to it. Give a little bit of wine there. Let's try and turn that up a bit. All right. over those little glaring white holes with a little bit of ochre stone colour so it's appearing through it. Right, let's get some windows in then. Right, the way we do that we have to get a nice not black, don't use black, they certainly look dark. We look at our, um, actually if we look at our reference picture, they are quite dark, aren't they? To be honest, but of course, if this is a photograph, sometimes if you slavishly produce what's on the photograph, it doesn't read right as a painting. So you've got to bear that in mind. So with that proviso, I think I will have a dark color, but it won't be black. It'll be something I create myself, which will be blue and a little bit of red. A little bit of red, a little bit of ultramarine, a little bit of burnt umber. Can you see? That's pretty dark, isn't it? But not so dark as to deaden the picture. It's just a little off, you see. There's infinite numbers of darks you can get. So let's go for that then. Let's put a little dab in here. Just a little, little smudge of color represent the panes of glass. Voila. I've got some down here in the lower window. Of course you've got a doorway in here. Just poking out just above that bit of stonework. So I've got some windows here again pretty much hidden by the uh, that garden wall. Okay, here we go. Put them in. And of course,
because there's we need to sharpen up on these windows generally with this little overhang but we'll do that but when we've got this color um, oh, I could put some dark under here it's always a bit darker and I've got windows here as well so that's how I'll put that window in there oh we've got windows here as well in the lower just on the street level and uh, where else have we got windows hidden well what I can do with this color I could just go on this edge like that and also here a little bit bluey a bit of lead work a bit of steely color that needs to be it's not reading correctly I need to put a bit of dark down that edge a bit darker still And that side of the chimney I could tighten up on that make that a bit darker all right and also this my reference picture is darker too so I need to do that perhaps but the way I can improve the um, structure of these uh, of the shadow structure is to under the eaves. I need to, uh, to put some shadow color across here under these eaves, which will be cast over these these windows. The shade, the little. Let me show you the reference here. Can you see just uh, under here, under the windows? There's a little cast shadow, a couple of feet of shadow uh, along here as well. So let's get that in. A little bit dark, darky, bluey, purpley. That's, that's quite dark. Some panel water. Bit of uh, cadmium red. That's quite dark, isn't it? <coughs> blue here yes I think we'll go I think we can go with that so take a good load and you see there's no clear definition really between this face of the wall and the roof so I need to do that I need to beef that up a little bit with this darker shadow color so what I'm gonna do is just run it along like that On the roof margin and of course let it come down a little bit as well so it crafts this sort of shadow and this is what you can do with watercolor it's rather it's translucent it gives you can glaze over things once you let them dry you can put another color over it a bit of shadow there look um, shadows coming off of there too I think right there you go um, again I need to tighten up with these things and uh, down here you see we've got I could put something in there look make that read if we've got something real going on down there again as I said it's all illusion all smoke and mirrors it's endless things you could do to um, make things read even more it's a window here you see I haven't done these yet one up here look tap in these little bits of darker steely color 
bit of um, shadow could have come down there as well. How about that? It's beginning to look like something. What do you think? Again, it's, it's a great temptation to go on fiddling with it. Um, you do it at your peril. Let me see if I can get some different green in there. Let's go back to my, my leaf green and see if I can... Yes, that's... Uh, you see down there on the edge of that part? Put a little green there. I think I might try and more there a little bit different in here because you're always looking for some sort of variety and interest this is what you're doing this is where it differs from the uh, photograph photographs are th that's the way it is with this you can change it artistic license or oh, there's a little window in there a little bit of white in there which I could I could um, put a little bit of drop a little bit of color there a little darkness so represent and down in here has got the way into the house as well Here we are, so I will no doubt fiddle somewhat more with this. Not overly do it, I hope. But what you can do is um, get your, um, your rigger brush and make some really tight little adjustments to it, which will um, bring it to life. Uh, in fact, let me just demonstrate that. A little bit, I won't do it all. Um, if I can find my little rigger. Here it is, my number four rigger. This one, can you see how quite fine that is? I could uh, then get some darker colours, a bit of umber again. Very beautiful, a little bit of blue to things up a little bit and I could tighten up on my my gate for instance put this more accurately or a little bit more well defined so people look at it and say oh yeah that's a good gate or you might even be able to put a put a hinge along there look put a hinge darker colour and hinge. Um, now what else can I do to make it real? Oh yes there's a few things on the uh, on the chimney you know I need to have these things correct. Well you don't have to but you may choose to. Uh, chim look. And there's a nice dark edge along here I notice on there. See how that sharpens things up? And also this little piece of uh, stonework has a dark edge to that as well. Like that. Just notice that. And of course I could, have we got, if I look closely, yes we've got a bit of cabling coming down. Down here, yes of course we have. Down here, on their aerials probably, like that, and they only have a little, or maybe a drain, a little bit there. Okay, and of course you can on your on your rooftop you can put lots of little textural marks like this find things with this rigor. It's 
called a rigger, of course, because the Victorians used to use them for doing the rigging on, on the sailing ships. Which, of course, probably a regular bit of work for them. Let's um, really tighten up on this window. It's not really right. One of them is open actually. Oh here. Got their burger alarm there. Got that. Might go just dark a little bit there. So we've got dark within dark. That gives some 3D again to it. Again. As I said, well, we've got darks and I've got this fine brush. I'll try and give some dimension to our wisteria here. Again, be on your got not to do too much. I think I'll put another one down there on my gate a bit rickety in my painting. In reality it was a lot better than that. There you go. That's the difference. A little bit darker. Go to... Oh, I've got a window here. That needs a little bright darkening up. And also there, there. On the chimney. Right. Um, well, I guess they've got dark bits along here. Lead work, I suppose, for the windows. And they've got it on the top as well. Right. Okay. What do you think of that, folks? Oh, wait a minute. I need, I've got these in this direction, these tile marks, but I don't have them going along this way. Perhaps I could do some. Right. Now, let's see if we make sure I've got this these it, little fine details. Make it read. All right, this, uh, now this curbside, that's interesting. You've got these little, there's a footpath here. And of course, this is the edge of the road coming down here. Like this, can you see? Going on like this. So what I could do now is see if I could get some illusion of the little the little stones, the little curved stones that you can find. can have endless fun with it if you wish. It uh, floats your boat. Put some curb stamps in. These little things. When you take up art, you'll notice it's a strange phenomenon. You look at things in a different way. With an artist's eye, you're always out, you observe things. So you say, oh, look at that shape, look at this, look at that. It's very strange. And if you give up painting for a while, and uh, you're kind of you're not so uh, observant. You, I'm constantly looking at the clouds and say, oh, look at this, look at that. Um, 
So if you want to enhance your, your view of the world, or observational skills anyway, that's what we're talking about, observational skills, they are certainly enhanced when you paint. I mean, look at this. Here I am, tiddling around with curb stones. Who looks at curb stones? Nobody, unless you're interested in art. I'm looking now, because I'm trying to replicate this little scene that I saw just a couple of days ago. Um, I could put a little colour in here, you know. Um, I think these are lilac. Um, or lavender? Lavender or lilac? Lavender, I think. No, the truth is, I left a secret. Um, they're not there. The plant is there. There's no colour. But I'm in the mood. I'm in the mood to build a, put a bit of lavender up there. So, why not? So I wonder if it's will be able to be seen against this. Uh, this is always the issue, of course. You've got to. Ah, that's right. We can bend the rule. We'll move it this way a little bit. Um, yes, I think we're getting a bit of colour there. So we'll bring it up here a little bit. Okay. Um, and I think I ought to call a halt before I do too much. See, I'm filling again now, but I'm trying to put some, see all this plain brickwork. Now, there's no law saying I have to, but with a little dry brush, look, I go over this, and it suddenly takes some texture. It looks like real brick. It's just amazing. That is what you get with this. If you use um, a decent paper, this is lank too much. So what I think I've got to do now is sign it. Now I'm signing it, but I will probably at my leisure do uh, a few other things to it. Only fine things, um, which I observe. I shall observe it for a couple of days and then uh, if necessary I'll have a go at it again. But of course there's always that danger. Don't do too much. But who knows what's too much is you've got to that's the fun. So I'm going to sign it now. Where should I sign it? I think down here. I put the date as well. 2020. I'll try and record this remarkable year. So there you are folks. I think I'm pretty much done with it today. May tiddle with it somewhat later, but uh, my good advice, I wish I'd pay attention to it, is not to fiddle. I've done enough. So we'll leave it at that. Hope you've enjoyed it. And if you're not a painter at the moment, you should Get that watercolour set and just have a bit of fun. You might surprise yourself.